Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to the breakout session. We are live here. We're going to be getting started in just a couple minutes. We got Anthony Beckham and Josh Collar. In just a couple minutes here, we'll be getting started on our video marketing session. Welcome anybody piling into the room. We'll be getting started in just a minute here. Sounds like Trevor is still in the main room uh, getting people directed over here. So we're just going to wait for some people to pile in and then we'll get it going. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to the breakout room on video marketing. We'll be getting started in just a minute here. What's up, Santosh? Santosh has been at this summit all day long. Very active in the chat. Appreciate you asking questions, man. It's been awesome having you here. Welcome, everybody. As we're piling in from the main room, I know Trevor just directed people to the breakout rooms. We'll be getting started in just a sec. This is the video marketing breakout for agents and investors. Hang tight. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the session. If you're just piling in, we'll get started in just a minute here. Got people piling in. Uh, if you just showed up, let us know. Are you an agent? Are you an investor? And maybe where are you at? What market are you in? And what are you hoping to get out of this session? We'll kick it off in just a minute here. Wait for a few more people to pile in. We need some Jeopardy music. <laughs> some elevator music. Welcome, welcome. At least the carrot theme song or something, right? Yeah, we do need a theme song. All right. We got some people in here. We are good to go. So I'm um, going to kick it off. Welcome to the video marketing breakout session. Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming in. Let us know if you're an agent investor, what you're looking to get out of the session, why you chose to show up to the video marketing session. I'm um, going to introduce our guests. We have Josh Collar. Uh, Josh Collar is a friend of Carrot for a few years and works with a lot of the top investors in our industry and a lot of our members uh, doing their video marketing, runs a turnkey video marketing soft, uh, 
marketing service called Color Media, where he does videos and podcasts, content, social media for a lot of the top investors in the industry. Okay. And is very familiar with video marketing and what's working on the investor side. And we also have Anthony Beckham, an agent actually in Roseburg, Oregon, near Care HQ. Anthony stumbled in our doors uh, a few years ago and came to Carrot Camp, a uh, good friend of Carrot, and he is crushing it on the YouTube side. He's using YouTube to get buyers leads, and he's kind of used video to become a local celebrity and hired on a video guy a couple of years ago. Um, so I'm going to kick this off, and I'm going to ask these guys to introduce themselves. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. We'll be answering some of these questions on video marketing throughout, and then specifically towards the end, uh, we'll get a little bit more tactical and answer some of the, you know, do some Q&A on video marketing. Um, so Josh, Anthony, welcome to the summit. Thanks for joining us. How you guys doing? Real good. Doing good. That's awesome. Josh, give us a, we'll start with you, man. Uh, give us a little bit about your background and uh, why, why did you go all in on video? Why video marketing? Yeah, so uh, it's a really long story that would take forever to uh, to talk about, but I'll give you the just the nutshell piece of it. So I've been in the real estate investing industry for going on uh, nine years now. Uh, I actually got in when I was 18 years old, going on 19, so early, early on. Uh, many of you guys know who Gary Harper is with uh, Sharper Business Solutions. He actually hired me to work for um, him, and he was a couple of uh, there, there was a couple partners that he was with that were in a massive wholesaling company. Um, here in the Midwest. And originally I'd started off with him. Uh, we were buying and selling in Michigan, state of Michigan. And then uh, eventually I kind of phased into being the marketing director for that wholesaling company. And at the, like, even at the beginning, like this is way back in, um, I started, I started becoming the marketing director right around 2013, 2014. It was a much different market. Like people, people do all acquisitions, marketing on the investor side of things now. And it was not that way <laughs> back then. It was all dispositions marketing. Um, but even then the principles of like what we'll talk about, I'm sure Anthony will talk about too with video content is, uh, the principles all stay the same. It's just the, the messaging might change and, and be a little bit different depending on the demographic you're going after. So, uh, you know, we were, we were doing all that marketing at the peak of well, where we were at, we were doing about three to 400 deals a year, um, all wholesales. And, uh, we, we did go, pretty deep into the content side of marketing, but also uh, doing a lot of video stuff. And that's what kind of broke me into A, the industry, but also B, um, the marketing of the industry and, and going into video. And then now today, we uh, like, like uh, Brady said, we have a content marketing service that services a lot of the influencers that a lot, actually some of them have been on this, <laughs> the Carrot uh, Summit here uh, today as well, and we'll be on tomorrow as well. Um, but a lot of the influencers that you you guys that are listening in on um, follow or you know ed get education from or even maybe you're in the programs, we work with them and uh, do a lot of stuff for them on the video side, social media management, stuff like that. So that's that's the nutshell. That's awesome. What about you, Anthony? How did you get started? Uh, a little bit about your real estate journey and why why did you choose to go all in on video? Yeah, I actually wanted to get into real estate investing and buy more properties after I bought my first house. And so found being a real estate agent, you know, could be a good way of making some income fast. So over the last five years, I was five years ago, built a small team. We did 125 transactions last year. That's with a couple admin staff and a couple buyers agents. Beginning of this, this year, I started a brokerage and we brought on a few more agents. So things are just rolling, rolling right along. Uh, and I suspect more and more growth now, especially since we've doubled our amount of salespeople. Mm -hmm. We we started doing the video stuff primarily because I saw a dependency on online leads, like from Zillow and these other outside sources. And so once that was like, you know, a third of our business or more, I was like, well, what if that went away? You know, that, that would hurt a little bit. So I had to find something that we could replace that with that where we were our own in Zillow. So we started making these videos, putting them on YouTube. You know, it took a good six months before it really started to gain traction. But now if you type in Roseburg, Oregon on YouTube, we're at least five of the first 10 results. And, mm. you know, we have a lot of the same results on Google as well by embedding those videos on our Carrot website, doing the blogs, doing the location pages, all with high ranking YouTube videos. And they just seem to feed off of each other and continue to generate leads off content that I did, you know, at this point, two years ago, even. 
Yeah. And that's key. I'm glad that you said that, you know, it took about six months to gain momentum. It's not, you know, if you're going all in on SEO, organic leads and video marketing, um, specifically with YouTube, it's a, it's more of a long-term strategy and it's something that it's a little bit harder to track versus other lead sources. And so it's something you kind of just need to go all in on for a long time, you know, I would say six months at a minimum a year and just say, heck, I'm going to try this. It's going to be uncomfortable at the start. I'm going to go all in and we'll reevaluate and see if it worked. Um, that's awesome, man. Uh, how long ago did you, Anthony, how long ago did you hire your videographer? That will be two years in April. So just about two years. And what did you, what did you guys start out? Like when you said, okay, like you, you recognize there's this need for online leads. And within that you recognize the trend with the video. Um, what were some of the first videos you started making? Uh, well, it all started with listing videos and really I thought there was just going to be a lot of listing videos, but then COVID happened and listings really dried up and, you know, market <laughs> kind of shifted a little bit. Um, but our best performing ones that we did early on were like our five, five best neighborhoods in Roseburg. I mean, if you type in that on, you know, just best neighborhoods in Roseburg were the first natural organic, uh, result on that and pros and cons that one still, I mean, those are ones that get you know, 10, 20, 30 plus views every day still to this day. Mm. So this is, I I want agents and investors to pick up on this because if you are in a smaller market, this is seriously low hanging fruit because in, in bigger cities, like if you were in Portland or maybe Nashville, for example, you might have other agents in your area already doing these strategies. Um, even then still, you can, you can still rank for some of these terms, but Anthony, for a while you were showing up for like just the term Roseburg, Oregon, I think you were number <laughs> yeah. one for Roseburg, yeah. Oregon, like above the city's we were, website. Yeah. We were on the front page. That's, that's for sure. It's crazy. So, uh, you guys listening to this, we've put together actually both these guys on here, Josh and Anthony helped, uh, me put together a guide. So care, we put together a guide. Um, on video marketing that has 52 ideas. The idea is you have uh, an idea for every week of the year that you can use. If you, if you don't know like where to start, like somebody in here mentioned in the questions, like what, you know, what mic, what camera we talk about that, how to get over your fear of being on camera. And then we give you ideas for like where to start with. So go get that guide. Josh and Anthony are both the ones who helped us put that together. And they're the knowledge and the brains behind this. Um, but yeah, go get that. And you'll kind of, if you do some research on Anthony Beckham and Roseburg, you'll kind of get a feel for the type of content he's putting out and how he's able to rank for some of these terms. Um, so one thing I want to dive into as we get in this conversation is, uh, some of the best, best use cases for a video starting off with like the no brainer. I mean, cause it's, it's easy to say like, Oh, you know, you just got to go, go do content. Like you just got to start making videos and people can hear that and implement it different ways. They might mean that, that, you know, get on Instagram stories and just start posting 10 times a day, or they might do long drawn out videos. And so, um, we'll start with you, Anthony. And then Josh, I want to hear from you, uh, what the, what you're seeing as like the best ROI for your time as far as making videos, because it can be overwhelming for people. They don't know where to start, but like, what types of videos are you making right now? And, and I'll frame this, sorry, I'll frame it like buyers versus sellers. You going after both and feel free to break it up if you want. Um, the best, the best stuff is going to be the local information that they can't get elsewhere. So, you know, you're not going to have, I mean, as far as the best neighborhoods, I just made a video reasons not to move here. That'll be published here in the next hour. Mm. So it's, <laughs> it's information that they can't get elsewhere from a local perspective. And those are the ones that do the best. I've done videos like about, let's say like different financing programs and stuff like that. Pe- people don't really care about the general information as much. Cause you could get that from, from anybody. I've also done things where like we highlight local businesses and things like that. I mean, they can do all right, but they don't do nearly as well as just the information base being the local guide to your city has, has been the, the absolute best performing videos that generate leads. And if you are in a high relocation area or say you have like a military base, you know, mm-hmm. or something like that in your town, something that, you know, creates a, uh, that online traffic that people are searching your town, you know, should I move here? For me, being in Southern Oregon, a lot of times that's people from California, but I also have them coming from the more metro areas up north, like Portland or Seattle. And a lot of times they're they're just following us for six, 12 plus months, you know, getting soaking up all this information. 
And those are the absolute easiest leads to convert because they've already spent, I mean, at this point you could spend hours with me uh, online just watching all my informational videos without us ever meeting. So that ends up creating a very warm lead uh, and a very easy conversion. Mm. I would imagine they're more educated too. And there's a, there's a much, yeah, they're, they're warmer and there's a higher level of trust because they feel like they know you, they've seen your videos. And so far they've tended to be higher, higher end as well. Mm. Okay. And are you, so these videos like top neighborhoods in Roseburg, Oregon, or what to look for when moving to Roseburg, Oregon, um, are you finding you're getting more buyer leads or seller leads or both with these? It's primarily buyer leads and Most it's primarily leads. people moving here from out of area. Cause you're not going to have a lot of people that live in Roseburg. I mean, I haven't, I haven't cracked the, the code for the listing, um, generate. I mean, I actually, I did pretty well with, uh, five things you can do to increase your home's value before mm. listing that one did pretty well, but it's where we're getting the abundance of leads. Are these people moving from out of area that are using our channel as a place to get local information? That's awesome. So takeaway from that is, um, be the local expert more than information that the, the informational videos are still useful as different use cases and maybe different areas in your website, but focus on being the, uh, local expert. Josh, what are you seeing on your side is like, you know, if you were to say it, like you have clients that you're doing video work for and you're consulting them saying, Hey, do this first. Where are you seeing the, the best ROI uh, videos? What types of videos are investors making? Sure. So it's going to be very subjective. Like I'm hearing Anthony speaking. I'm like, yeah, that is, that is incredible information. And obviously he's doing that like super well. Um, and it's subjective depending on, it, it is also different. Like you may be still in real estate, but maybe you're a realtor versus a wholesaler versus a influencer, somebody that's actually teaching how to <laughs> invest in real estate or like Anthony in some ways is a, is an influencer as well. Um, so it is very subjective, uh, and the types of content you put out, where you put it out and, and that sort of thing. But if, if I'm talking from a general speaking landscape, the, the most important thing is just, uh, it's, it's hilarious cause it's so, it's so juvenile when it comes to marketing, but people overlook it all the time. Um, because they, they see all these other influencers. Like I hear it all the time. Like, how can I get to that many followers on Instagram or how can I get that many subscribers on YouTube? I'm like, hold on. Video is marketing, period. Video should only be put out as marketing. And what does that basically mean is it should be to drive leads to whatever it is that your service or product is. So if you're a wholesaler, let's just say, for instance, if your primary marketing is to motivate its sellers, which is what most wholesalers are doing at this point. Um, and even, you know, even if you're a fix and flipper or you're doing rentals or whatever, uh, you know, you still got to get the property. So most of the time, everybody's doing acquisitions marketing to, to, to bring that in. The, the important thing to understand is like, it doesn't matter. Like you're not going to build a YouTube subscriber count of, you know, hundred thousand motivated sellers looking to subscribe to your YouTube channel, to come to your channel every week to, to watch your videos. So the primary purpose for that is to get it in front of them on the right platforms, the right places in order to drive them. Because we all know, even though referrals would be a wonderful thing to only have referrals as, you know, that's your lead source. Uh, we all know that that doesn't always happen. And so you got to source your own leads. And in order to do that, most of these people are transactional. So they just want, you know, very quick answers. They want, they, they have a problem. And at any given moment, they have a problem. They're looking for a solution. And maybe your video comes up across them. They, they find it, they get the answer to their question, they contact you, they sell their house. Like they're, hmm. th th that's, that's the primary source for it. So it, it wouldn't matter at that point if you had gained that person as a subscriber, your primary goal was to buy a house from them. And maybe you wholesaled it, got a $40,000 rip, and was it worth it? Sure, but maybe the video got two views and one of those views was your $40,000 lead. <laughs> was it worth it to you at that point? And then yeah. let's look at the other side of it. Let's say you got 100,000 views, but nobody converted through that video. Was it successful? No, absolutely not. Like they're, they're, It's very subjective. And I hear this all the time from people. So the other side of it could also be there's a lot of different angles, right? So if maybe you are a wholesaler, but you're marketing to other wholesalers trying to get them to bring you leads because you maybe have the, the buyer connections. Then at that point, yeah, you could build a subscriber list of 100,000 wholesalers that are learning how to bring you the proper deals. It's the way you approach 
how you're doing the video towards them. So your video strategy would be, hey, wholesalers, here's how to bring me the right deals. Here's how to go do driving for dollars. Here's how to, you know, go talk to the motivated sellers and and talk them down on price or whatever that looks like. Like that's your primary goal. So I, there's a lot of different like, hey, here's the ABCs of video content, but it all starts with that. It all starts with what are you actually trying to achieve with your marketing and video is only a source of marketing. You, you, I actually didn't answer your first question when you um, asked me to yeah. introduce myself. You're saying, why did you go all in on video content? And as Anthony was answering it, I was thinking like, you know what? I got an answer for that. The answer is that it's, it's not like we can't get romantic with these marketing channels. We have to go after what your actual avatar is consuming. And if, it, if video is the case, then that's it. That's what you have to go after. If at some point it turns to, you know, podcasting or maybe it's billboards or at any given moment in history, it was newspaper ads or something like that. That's what you have to go all in at. And that's, that's the important thing to understand. It's not just, it's not just being romantic with video. Like everybody loves video, but if at some point God knows when, if it goes away, what's next, that's what you have to go after. So, right. That's interesting. I, I love how you brought up like it's subjective based on what you're trying to do because it's really easy to look at like influencers or people with big YouTube channels. And I feel like our our perspective is probably a little bit skewed thinking like, oh, if I've only had a, you know, I've only had a yeah. hundred views. Oh, that's not successful. Or this person has a hundred thousand, a million, three million subscribers, whatever it is. Um, but, you know, we th you got to think of like, those are human beings. Like there's a human being behind every view or every couple of views, whatever. Like imagine mm -hmm. if you had 100 people in a room and you got to tell them your idea. That's insane. You know, mm -hmm. like as an agent or as an investor and Anthony, you and I have talked about that uh, at times in the past too. You've been like, well, you know, you know, this video has a few thousand views, but um, have you had any videos where it's like they've gotten 50 views, a hundred views, but you still see that as valuable? Oh yeah. And still I, make those videos. It, it all, it all adds to the library. I mean, cause that's essentially what it is at this point. I mean, someone can get on my channel and learn all there is to learn about, about town. Hmm. Yeah. You're and, and, and something, someone, something I want to mention too, that you brought up is like, you have a hundred people in the room, but if that hundred people are the wrong audience, if you're on the wrong, if you're at the wrong, in the wrong room <laughs> and the people that are in the room are the wrong audience, then it's for nothing. But if, you're in the right room. And let's say you have two people in the room, you're in the right room. So mm. that's, that's why, that's where platforms and execution comes in. Because if you're trying to market to motivated sellers, TikTok's not going to be the answer for you. Let's just be honest. <laughs> if you're marketing right. to other wholesalers, then that might be the case, but that's why you have to understand your audience so well. That's why, that's why marketing 101 is like job number one, learn your avatar that you need to know them better than they know themselves. And mm. that's just comes over studying your leads um, the, the sellers that are talking to. And by the way, all this is the same, like the methods are the exact same. They apply to realtors as well. So, right. Which is key. It, I'm so glad you said that because for Anthony, it's like, no, your avatar, Anthony's avatar is people who live in Roseburg. Yeah. Uh, well, mm -hmm. and you know, people who are coming in from out of town. So he needs to know what's important in this town. And, you know, he needs to know the ins and outs of his city. He needs to know his city better than anyone else. And he does. And he yeah. shows that in his videos. And something um, I want to point out, because I was bringing it, I'm sorry, I, I wanted to point this yeah. out because we're talking about Anthony's YouTube channel. Um, I just kind of skimmed through it before we even hopped on the, on, on the stream here. And something I want to you know, like completely applaud him for is like exactly what you said. I mean, the first video that um, one of the first videos I see here is like the, the frozen yogurt, like things to do in Rose, Roseburg. Well, somebody might look at that and say, how is that going to bring you a lead, Anthony? Well, it's not necessarily like marketing is so tricky because it's all about being at the right place at the right time. So maybe you show them the video of the yogurt shop and that person maybe just a week later happens to decide I want to put my house on the market or I want to buy a house. <laughs> and then they remember, oh, wait, that dude that showed me the yogurt shop on the on on YouTube Maybe I'll contact him because I actually went to the yogurt shop and I liked it. <laughs> and yeah. so it, it's, it's all the steps it's, it, and that's called curation. And so he's doing that for the longer play, but people don't want to, people don't want to hang out for the long term. They want like the instant success. Anthony's the reason why he's successful at what he does is because he's going for that longer play. So that's something I want to point out too. That's very, very important. Mm. And, and we have 400 subscribers on our channel. So that's not a lot 
you know, when looking at other YouTube channels, but it's a vanity metric. A, yes, exactly. We're in a 25,000 population town. I mean, there are some videos <laughs> that have 8,000 views on. I mean, that's one in three people in town. I mean, you know, yeah. however you want to look at it, I mean, you're famous. It's, it's worth doing. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it's crazy how much we started to get recognized just when we were out and about. And even though right. I can only track about 25% of our closings right now coming from the actual video content, not only has that continued to grow, you know, month, month over month, but a lot of times we'll get to a closing, you know, they came through Zillow or something and they're talking about how much they love our videos. And I'm like, Oh, you watch our, our videos too. Or it's another way that we're staying in front of past clients and everything too. Or like, I just ran into my inspector the other day and he had mentioned, you know, you know, I, you're a marketing genius. I love those videos. I'm like, Oh, you watch them. You know, like you don't, you don't know who's who's watching them. Mm -hmm. And it might, it might not even necessarily have been the lead source, but it could have, I mean, it could be a lead source in a lot of cases for you, but it also could be the thing that separated you from the next agent or investor in town where they said, you know what? I feel like I know this guy. I want to work with him. Mm -hmm. So we got people in chat asking, um, Josh, how are you, you know, so you're coaching investors on what types of video to create, what to say, where to publish them, all of these things. How are you finding that investors are getting uh, motivated seller leads using video? So there's a couple of really, really good methods that work well. So the first thing is uh, you mentioned that list of 52 topics. I think this was maybe a year and a half ago or so that I was on a, a carrot call with you guys. Um, and I was, I was talking about how to create topics for you know, motivated seller leads and that kind of thing to do videos on. And that's not those topics, by the way, that we created. It's not just for video. It's also for you can create blog articles and content that actually going to be SEO driven on your website and that kind of thing. So it, it's, it's all the above. Um, so when it comes to doing videos for motivated sellers, again, you have to, the mindset's the most important thing. I'm not going to reverberate everything that I just said in the last 10 minutes, but understanding like if you, if you produce a video, you shoot a video, you have it produced, you have it put out there. Um, if, as long as it's in the right place and in front of the right people, don't look at the vanity metrics, right? And a lot of people look at you and tell you like, you're crazy. The numbers are the only thing that matter, but th they do, but there's also layers of numbers. Again, if I get one view, but that one view converted to a $40,000 wholesale rip, then it was successful. But if I got a mm -hmm. hundred views and it didn't equate to anything, then it wasn't successful. It's all, it's all about what's, what's that last layer. The la last layer is profit from a deal that mm -hmm. that's it. Right. So, um, and that, that's from lead to, um, conversion. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to video content and this, uh, by the way, it's not, again, it's not just video content, it's all content. I always say this content marketing, video content marketing, all it is, is answering questions that your target demographic has about your services, your products, your offering, whatever it is. So if you look at the, the topics that we have, a lot of it has to do with just answering very novice questions that a motivated seller would have. And a great method of creating topics, by the way, is if you're on a phone call with a motivated seller and they're asking you questions, you better be writing all those questions down. Especially if, let's say, for instance, you take you know, 20 inbound calls today and every single call had one similar question, you need to be doing video content on that. And it's basically mm -hmm. the approach of just answering that question that somebody had, just do it on a video form. Now you could throw that into an email campaign and send that out to sellers that are on your, your list that you're following up with. Uh, you know, that's, it's a great tool for your salespeople to, and acquisitions agents to be able to use and leverage. It's being able to send that to a buyer and say, Hey, here's, Here's the closing process. You asked about the closing process. Here's a video on that. And it just explains it in very good detail. A lot of it's just, again, curation of the lead. And because a lot of sellers, uh, you know, and, and a lot of people look at me like, hey, a lot of sellers, they just want the highest and best offer for the property. Okay, but that that's not always the case. And there's ways to skirt around that as well with content to be able to warm up to the people because I've heard countless stories of investors doing video content or getting that kind of marketing in front of people that, wanted the high, highest and best offer, but they all actually took a little bit lower to them because they were a little bit more trusting um, mm. because of the videos that they watched. But that that's why it's so important. It's just, it's curation of the lead. So getting, getting those topics done um, at some point, maybe I can go over like testimonials are obviously a really, it, that's, that's a key critical thing. That's just a credibility builder that you could put in front of people. You, you're able to do case studies with people and uh, that kind of thing. So I would say from an investor standpoint, focus on answering questions that people have, 
putting them out on your website. I, a little trick that I talked about. I was actually on a podcast with Trevor when I did come out uh, to Carrot Camp a year and a half ago. Um, and he asked me like, what's a little ninja trick that you could do? And so I said, put the video, you're going to put it on your YouTube channel, embed it on your, your uh, you know, carrot site, get it transcribed, put that transcription word for word in that same article on your website, mm -hmm. and then also create a um, kind of show notes theme for it as well. So like go to Fiverr, have somebody do a show notes for that video and it's SEO mm -hmm. driven. That'll help significantly with your content. So that's a little ninja trick for you guys, but um, Absolutely. That, those are some of the best results is, is just that principle of answering the questions that your sellers will have. Yeah. Video post, man, we have it. It's built. If you're a carrot member and you're not yeah. using this and you've watched the session, now you have no excuse. Upload your video to YouTube, go into your carrot account, hit video post, and it literally will take the YouTube video, transcribe it into a blog post. So you can kill two birds with one stone. Now you're getting the YouTube SEO benefit and you're getting the benefit of it being on your carrot site. So you're showing Google, Hey, I'm an expert in this topic. I'm answering the questions that people have and people are going to find it valuable. And not everybody wants to watch a video. Some person um, might rather skim the notes of the video. Okay. And so it's still valuable content. And you're wasting that video if you're not doing that. I mean, to yeah. be yeah. honest, I mean, we're taught, I mean, we've been primarily talking about YouTube, but we take those YouTube videos and put them on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on Instagram, on TikTok, because why not? You already went out there and created the content, put it everywhere and, you know, think a little bit about that distribution because that's mm -hmm. just, uh, you're leaving breadcrumbs. I mean, that's all you're doing, you're leaving breadcrumbs out there for leads to come find you. Right. Yeah. And you can also you can also take that transcription and break it up. I wouldn't recommend taking the whole thing, but you could take that transcription and use that as the basis for your YouTube video description. Because YouTube, I've had a couple of people during the summit want to learn more about YouTube SEO, and that's kind of you know Trevor and I were talking like, hey, maybe we should do a series on this. So let me know if you're interested in that. Anyways, yeah. that's a side tangent, but you can use that transcription uh, for your YouTube description, and that tells YouTube uh, more what your video is about. So I'll give you a little tip on this, Brady. This is something that we've cracked the code on with YouTube because we manage 50 YouTube channels with clients. Um, the, the, the code that's cracked is a lot of people, it's kind of a hidden feature that a lot of people don't utilize is the time-stamped uh, chapters mm -hmm. that YouTube yeah, allows you to do. Yeah. Yeah. That's, why, that's why for every YouTube video that goes out for a client, we do a show notes for it. So it's, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a description that's SEO-driven that's maybe – uh, two paragraphs long and use as much of the characters as you possibly can within that YouTube description. So it's the, it's a full description about the video. It's show notes with timestamps that are like kind of documenting what's being talked about at what time point within the video. And then below that we're doing um, quotes that are within the video. Cause that helps a lot with SEO as well. Um, we'll, we'll alter it a little bit. It won't be like word for word. We'll like make sure it's, you know, it's not like, you know, some people will repeat a word or say, um, or ah and stuff like that. So we take all that out. Yeah. Um, so we craft it up a little bit more strategically and then links are at the bottom, like as many links as we could possibly do. So that's a little, it's a magic oh, trick yeah. that works beautifully for YouTube descriptions. Shoot. I mean, we've got, I mean, the, the proof is in the pudding. I've, I have personally have a video I did as a, like an affiliate, a review of a piece of software I've been using or, uh, excuse me, a service I was using for a couple of years. And, um, I did a review on them, made sure it was really valuable. Same thing, answered lots of questions. Like what questions would people have if they were looking to buy this, uh, service and then transcribed it, use video post, broke those up, put it in the description for YouTube. And, okay. and it's really easy. Like you're saying, Josh. So what Josh is talking about is, is putting them in the YouTube description. All you have to do is use the, use the bracket, use a bracket, put the time. So it's at one minute, call in 30 seconds and bracket, and then text next to it. And then YouTube is going to take that from your description, automatically hyperlink it and turn it into a chapter. And that's where y'all are on YouTube and you see the play bar broken up into sections. That's how people are doing that. Mm -hmm. And YouTube loves it. YouTube eats it up all day, every day. What's super cool about it, Brady, is that every single timestamp, and by the way, like something that we learned the hard way is the first timestamp should be zero colon zero zero. And, mm. and then just, we just normally put introduction because if you don't put the zero mark for whatever reason, it won't populate to YouTube. So that's a side note. I don't know why they did it that way, but um, the awesome thing about those timestamps that you put in there is every single one of those, like make sure you craft them strategically just like you would a title for a YouTube video because every single one of those is going to act as another title for your video. So that's really important. And it, and it drives, it's, 
it's been proven it drives the same results as your actual video title does on your on, on your video the the timestamps do so take yeah, those seriously if you google something and it's like the third chapter in your it'll video, pop up yes yep. uh, as like a result on on google so yeah when i got my first motorcycle i was uh reviewing a helmet because i was looking for a helmet to wear and um i got a helmet and then i was going to swap out the visor so i went to youtube or i went to google actually not youtube i went to google and typed in how to swap visor for Scorpion XO helmet. And the first thing that popped up was a video, but it was a 32 minute video. I was like, I don't want to watch 30. I, I just want to know how to pop the visor out of the helmet. And it gives you that. And I clicked on it and it took me to like 13 minutes. And it was a full review of the helmet, but mm -hmm. it took me to that one place. And I was like, cool, it's all. Yeah. So yeah. Mm, that's awesome. And the thing is, like I mentioned this at the beginning of the call, if, you, if some of y'all are coming in late, just catching this, but a lot of this is really low hanging fruit. And especially if you're in smaller markets, I mean, Anthony, you and I were here, Carrot HQ in Roseburg, Oregon, in a town of 20 to 30 ish thousand people. And I don't see anyone else putting the amount of energy that you're putting into it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Sweet opportunity. And there's a couple of ways you can do it. I mean, you can go uh, like I started with a GoPro and walking around and doing it that way. But really what was the big bottleneck for me is at that time I was already doing 80 to hundred transactions a year. So mm -hmm. I just found myself kind of doing a video here and then a couple of months ago by before I do the next one, you know, when you're editing it and everything. So it wasn't really until I hired somebody that could help out with that. And now we have like a video team, you know, and we yeah. have a day set aside for that, um, that we really started to be able to put out content frequently but the other part of that is by hiring a professional to you know hang out with you for the day as you go and tour these different neighborhoods and everything is the level of quality that we are putting out there it's going to be super hard for somebody to you know with the gopro or whatever to duplicate or uh, they're they're not going to be able to do anything better unless they go out there and they're spending two days and hiring a full crew i mean uh because we're just making such high level content mm. so that it's hard to for someone to come in there and outrank it right mm. right and that's it's interesting that you talk about that like there is a um there is a time and a place for like really high level polished content like we had shamika fox on the summit just a little bit ago most of y'all saw her and she's got a full-time videographer she's putting together very well uh put together videos. If you knew Shamika behind the scenes, you know that she's actually not putting a lot of time and energy into planning. It's more of like, we just kind of plan them, like fly by the seat of your pants, just shoot the video, have fun with it, and then passes it off to an editor. Um, but there's a time and a place for both. Let's talk about, I want to talk about that real quick, like when quick and dirty versus when high polished, because I feel like that hangs up a lot of people. It's like, mm -hmm. This whole idea of video marketing is is daunting. It's like, oh my gosh, everybody hates seeing themselves on camera. Everybody hates listening to their own voice. It's just, it makes you cringe. Even someone like me who's on, you know, live stream right now, I come back and listen to myself. I'm like, oh my gosh, don't even, don't even show me. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about this one comment that came in through the chat, and then we'll talk about like what people should do if they feel overwhelmed or hung up. Uh, Sky River Properties. Thanks for engaging. You've been on the summit all day. Uh, I love it. Um, if you are doing the video editing and you are an agent or investor, please stop. It's not the best use of your time. Uh, hire someone. Uh, Josh, this is something that you do. Yes, you do video mm -hmm. editing. Yeah. Um, work with Josh if you're an investor. Um, if you're doing video consistently, he's a great option. Um, if not, find someone that you can bring under your wing, bring them into your business and pitch it as an opportunity for them to learn if they want to learn about real estate. Isn't that how you found your guy, Anthony? Or how did you find your editor and uh, videographer? <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, we made flyers and posted them up at the local college. We did oh. Craigslist and it was actually Craigslist is how we found our guy. And I mean yeah. that, you know, you can just send stuff off to somebody, but you know, me and Alec, we hang out at least one day every week. And I mean, he's become one of my best friends because we hang out all the time to go out and create the videos, you know, and it makes it fun. Mm -hmm. And I think that that energy and everything comes across in the, in the video as well. Oh yeah. And, and I mean, like, I've been on both sides, making the video, editing the video. If you're editing the video, it's taking away from your creative energy to, you know, to do what you're doing, which is marketing, uh, negotiation, negotiating and coming up with creative ideas to shoot the videos. You, you can't be spending all yeah. your time on post-production as an agent or investor. You just can't. Um, what, what are you guys like, Josh, you work with a lot of investors. Do you see any hesitancy in people? Do you have to coach people through like, 
are they overcomplicating it? Do they not have the confidence? Like what gets in the way of people doing video? Oh man, everything. So uh, there's, there's a few, <laughs> I have some, like, I need to create like a 10 commandments of video content. I'm going to do that. So I literally just thought of that because you, you, the way you framed up whatever you said, um, it's, it's very interesting. So I get all the time, like, so I, in, in a previous life, early on in the color media career, I did a lot of on-site video shoots. So I would go visit investors. I mean, within a three year time period, I probably visited about, uh, close to 200 investors. I mean, I was on, on a plane like three times a week. It sucked. Um, but I was, I was going into these investors offices and filming video with them and also their team. And I would say about 80% of the people that were on camera hated it. And it's, it was very interesting watching that kind of form up. So I got really good at making people comfortable, making mm -hmm. them understand, like, and especially team members, a lot of times, like they didn't sign up to be on video. Their CEO or <laughs> the owner of the company is just like, Hey, you're doing this. Yeah. Um, but a lot of times people get hung up on video because they're uncomfortable about it. So I'm gonna give some tough love. This is how I approach this problem is if you are a business owner uh, and a lot of people like, you know, Anthony, you, you deal a lot with realtors and your realtor, you, you don't own the business, but you own your, let's call it a practice that, that you're doing as a, as a realtor. Uh, if you're a wholesaler or whatever, it, there's a lot more difficult things that you've done to get your business off the ground and keep it going than being on video. So all I say is suck it up. You just got to do what you got to do. It's very simple. If you are afraid to be on video, it's, and not everybody's going to take this like, you know, like it's like it's sweet candy, but it, it's the truth. Like the, you, you are going to be sitting back watching other people dominate your market as they're putting video content out because all you are is afraid to do it. It's very simple. I honestly have no other words for that because <laughs> yeah. Yeah. it's, it's, it's something that, you know, you, you, you jumped into being a business owner. So you already took a risk. You already did something that was super uncomfortable. And if you're going to get anywhere, let's get to a mindset location. Like if you're going to get anywhere in life, you have to do things that are uncomfortable for you. And in marketing, one of those things is being on video. The other approach could always be to have somebody that is in your office, or maybe you have a partner or something like that. That's okay with being on video, get them on the video as opposed to you. Okay. And, and so there's ways to skirt around this, but that, that's something that, you know, I do deal with a lot. Uh, and I think that it's, it's different if you are the head honcho when you're being on video, as opposed to like, I had, I do kind of have like a five commandments of, um, uh, d doing testimonials with motivated sellers because these people, they didn't sign up to be on video. Uh, and normally they're not interested in it at all, but you still want a testimonial video for them. So how do you make them feel comfortable? That's a little bit of a different story. But if you right here are listening to it, I'd say suck it up. Uh, the, the one rule that I have is keep it simple. Like if you, if you overcomplicate your setup, the reason why Anthony, um, and I was actually going to ask too, like, you know, not everybody, A, can afford a full-time video person um, and they don't maybe know how to look for somebody. So I think it'd be a good idea for Anthony to kind of crack that open. But if you are the type of person that you're like, I don't really want a full-time video person or I can't afford it or whatever, um, it's from an investor standpoint, it's a little bit different than a realtor because Anthony is going to tell you something different just because the demographic is different as well. But if you keep it simple, like most cell phones nowadays have incredible cameras, maybe just have somebody that's on your team or whatever, film you as you're talking about it, plug in a good microphone, you know, use, use your AirPods or whatever as microphones, just make sure it sounds crisp and clear as you're going along. Or you could even just do a simple setup. Like the setup that I have right now is I've got these road wireless go mics that I plugged into my camera and my camera is my webcam plugs into my laptop. Boom, it's done. Yeah. And it, the video looks nice and crisp. I sound good. And that's how I keep it simple. Like I, I'm a video guy myself. So I, I just moved into a house. And so that's why I have nothing on my walls. Mm -hmm. uh, but I have boxes like all around me. And most of these are camera gear. I don't touch them guys. Like I don't touch any of this camera gear ever. <laughs> it's because if, if I overcomplicate the process, it will not get done. And mm -hmm. by it not getting done, it's not going to stay consistent. And when you're in this game of video content, consistency is everything. And, and some of the stuff that we've talked about is little minuscule things. Like they're very, they're very detailed items, but they're very easy to do. 
And as long as you're doing the fundamentals correctly over time consistently, that's when you become successful in marketing. Yeah. But you can't do it if you're complicating the process, right? So, and that's why, like, it's genius that Anthony has a video guy that's walking around with him because all he has to do is talk. Like, all, that's all he's got to do is just open his mouth. And now <laughs> content's going out. He knows it's going to happen and it makes life easy. So, yeah. keep it simple. If that means that you got to bite a bullet and hire a video person, do it. Um, if you want to film your own, uh, very hopefully that this is okay. We've talked about this on a ca carrot call oh, before, yeah. but um, rei.video is the platform where you can go submit to having videos to be edited or go to Fiverr, find a video editor on Upwork or whatever, um, and just have them do the video editing. All you need to do is focus on, if you're going to do it yourself, focus on getting decent video, focus on getting good audio and delivering content that's well thought out. And again, if you just frame it up as answering a question that your demographic has about what you're doing, you'll be A-OK. -okay. And just get it out. That video editor can cut out any ums, ahs, any pauses, breaks, any thoughts that you messed up on or whatever. Focus on getting it out. So those are my simple to-dos. <laughs> and, and what I tell like my agents and stuff, like, hey, man, you need to be posting on social media and blah, blah. And, oh, yeah, I don't know. That isn't a good photo of me or whatever. It's like... <laughs> That's what you bleep and look like, man. I mean, that's what everybody sees. Like, that's what you look like. That's what you sound like. Yeah. Um, yep. Just that's you. You know, whenever you go and meet a client, that's what they're seeing. So, it, you know, them seeing it on a video isn't any different. And then as far as the I, I, I think people just look for an excuse to not do it, right? Yeah. That's what well, it scary. ends up being. I mean, it is. It, it is. It, I mean, it takes a while to get comfortable with a camera being yes. in your face. I mm -hmm. still mess up. I got a, I probably got more bloopers by the end of the day than I do content that we can use. But, but you, you kept know, going. Part of the, you, but you oh, kept yeah. going is the important thing, right? Yeah, you got and to. That, and, and as far as the equipment is concerned, I mean, honestly, I think that like some vertical selfie kind of stuff could do just as well. I mean, and I mean, I've noticed in some of our, you know, like using just like a photo that I took versus like a professional thing. Sometimes those actually get more clicks. And I don't know if it's just because someone's scrolling, you know, it looks more like something their friends did rather mm -hmm. than, you know, but you're starting to see more and more of that in marketing. You know, it's not the guy who's oh. standing next to the Lamborghini and the polished shots that are always doing well. A lot of times it's the guy that has the selfie camera you mm -hmm. know so i don't think that's anything to to worry about and my guy wasn't like some big professional you know outfit i mean at that time he worked at the airport and he was like a just a hobbyist you know um but he had some skills and we polished those together and we've added little bits of equipment as we've gone on to make our stuff better and better it isn't something that you have to go drop 10 grand on all all at once even to this day we haven't spent nearly 10 grand you know on mm -hmm. on all this oh, stuff yeah. but you know buy a new stabilizer or you know upgrade our audio or buy in this microphone that i'm talking into you know all those things can come with time and mm -hmm. i mean i would argue that point all day of like it has to be you if you're too polished if it's too overcomplicated then there's going to be a disconnect because they're going to get used to seeing this version of you online that's wearing a certain thing, looking, talking a certain way. They're going to meet you in real life. And if there's a disconnect, it's going to rub them the wrong way. It doesn't matter where you're an agent investor. But Anthony, you have pretty much like pretty close to the same personality um, and style that you do in your videos as you do in real life. You know, you're wearing the same things. It's not abnormal. You're not trying to be somebody else. You're trying to be a certain thing. You're just answering people's questions and being helpful. Um, we got, unfortunately, we only have about five minutes left here. Uh, we could go on for an hour about this. I could go all day on video marketing. Um, let's just try to make the last few minutes, the last five minutes we do have like as, as insanely valuable and jam through some, some tactical video advice for these people. Um, somebody earlier had mentioned that shorts are taken off. YouTube is definitely preferring their algorithm is, is favoring shorts for sure right now. Same way Instagram is doing with reels. They're basically both doing this to um, combat TikTok because TikTok is on the rise big time right now. Uh, at Carrot, we've actually been testing more shorts. It's this interesting game of where it's, it's throw a lot of spaghetti at the wall. Is that kind of what you're seeing, Josh? Is like it's yes. it throw a lot we of put, spaghetti at the wall yeah, and maybe one takes we, off. Yeah, we push out roughly 2,000 shorts a week. Um, so here, so we add it and then push them out for our clients. So here's the thing about shorts is the trick that we're still trying to crack the code on is shorts works the same way as TikTok and Reels. On Reels, you could rack up 
50,000 views on a video and get 12 subscribers or uh, followers. Sorry. Mm -hmm. You can get like, literally it could turn out to be like that. The, the, the mindset you gotta be thinking about is the platform itself. So in order for somebody to follow you on Instagram after they watch a reel, first of all, they have to like it. Um, like enjoy the video, not necessarily like thumbs up it, but then they have to click on your, your profile. Then they have to click follow. And then like, it's very interesting. I watch a lot of times I watch my wife on like how she treats social media and I'll just observe that. That's literally my full-time job is observation of these kind of things. And she'll just scroll through reels. She'll go through like a hundred videos in two minutes. And I'm like, do you ever follow any of these people that you like? And, and a lot of times, like, like every third or fourth video is the same person, like doing the same video. And she's like, no, I just kind of rely on Instagram to show me what I want. <laughs> like, that's interesting. Yeah. So YouTube shorts is kind of the same way is that it, in, and YouTube's made it a little easier. I think they have a subscribe button on the short itself. Um, yeah. after you watch it. So they've made it at first, it wasn't like that, but so they made it a little easier, but the trick is going to be, how do you, yeah, views are cool, but on YouTube subscribers are a lot more valuable than views are. Um, in some, in some scenarios, again, it depends on what you're trying to use YouTube actually for. Um, mm -hmm. so that's something to look out for, but that's why you always got to understand how the platform works itself because racking up views may not be the best thing for, for your YouTube channel. And then there's the conversation of like, well, what about retention rate or watch right. rate? And you know, so. And, it, and at the end of the day, <laughs> yeah. And it goes back to our conversation in the beginning about like, are you looking to be famous? Are you looking to become an influencer or build a giant subscriber base? Or are you looking for leads and to build people's yeah. trust and answer money. their questions? Mm -hmm. Yeah, looking for money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's uh, Some of those are vanity metrics. Well, shoot, we got like one, two more minutes. Anything else tactical you guys want to talk about? Any ninja tricks you got? Any what? parting words? Whatever you're recording, like I said, put it on YouTube, put it on Facebook, make sure you're doing it across all platforms. Another thing that we're doing now, and we're even going back through my library of 100 plus videos and turning those into reels and into shorts and into stories and, you know, taking screenshots from them for Instagram and just, you know, you start to realize that it all starts with the video. So you go out there and you make the long form, but you can change that long form into Instagram posts and into reels and into short form as well so you focus on the long form video and then everything else will follow you know just through editing yeah i concur on that i have a presentation that i've done several times that is how to take one 45 minute podcast episode and turn it into 53 pieces of content and it like it's you can do pdfs you can do books you could do courses you could do a social media post i mean it's it's crazy you just got to get a little creative with it and chop it up utilize what you have you don't have to do like 10 fresh videos, 10 fresh, you know, 30 minute videos every week. Uh, yeah. Like what Anthony said. So, I mean, we produce about five to 6,000 repurposed pieces of content a week and distribute it. So it works. As an agency, right. Helping multiple people. Yeah. As a, <laughs> yeah, I yeah. didn't do it myself. Yeah. <laughs> you, no, no, You're like, no. shoot, I'd that's the standard. <laughs> You're like, I got to do 6,000 videos. Josh told me. Yeah, I do exactly, one a week. Yeah. You know, if you're yeah, a busy yeah. real estate agent or investor, I mean, you know, it's hard to make the time for it. I, I know mm -hmm. that it is, but if you just put one day a week, I mean, I know that's how Trevor does it. You know, he has a content yeah. day and that's like yeah. all he focuses on. And that's kind of where I was like, okay, I guess I have to just do that same thing. So if I go out there mm -hmm. and make a video or two that day, mm -hmm. bada bing, bada boom. Yeah, Absolutely. Trevor's doing it. We got We got all got to do it. That's right. That's <laughs> right. I mean, y'all can hit. Yeah, I mean, y'all can hit me up, Brady at Kara.com. Feel free to shoot me a message. Like we could. I mean, we could talk content all day. I mean, I'll mm -hmm. tell you behind the scenes at Kara. I mean, a, a nine million dollar software company. You know, fastest growing company in America, three or four years in a row. We're doing the same things that Josh and Anthony are talking about. We're not doing anything super fancy. We do have a full time videographer. We do have myself heading up content, but we also do a lot of quick and dirty stuff. Not everything is like this big polish event we're doing right now. Um, so yeah, closing words. Uh, I'll answer this one question real quick here. Do you write scripts for your videos? Um, go to carrot.com slash video. Yeah. That's another one of those things that's going to get in the way you write scripts for your videos. It's, it's going to bottleneck you. There are some use cases where if you're answering specific questions, it might be helpful to have like bullet points or like really outlines. simple. Yeah. Outlines. Yep. So that's write what I do. outlines. Yeah. And then outlines that's what I day. use for the, for the blog post, give that to my team member to turn into something. I mean, she can, yep. oh, yeah. she makes it all based off my script that I use for the video that, you know, cause sometimes you have to do a little bit of research and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. so. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so if you guys, 
if you guys are going to start doing content, I mean, uh, try to batch it out, have a day, set aside yep. a day or even just half a day where you can get in the right creative headspace, free up your schedule and, um, batch it out. You know, Trevor has a content day. It's every Thursday, you know, we might record three, four five podcasts in a day. And that lasts us a couple months sometimes, but just get in the headspace, batch it out. Releasing one video a week doesn't mean you have to shoot one video a week. So just be smart about your schedule. Um, man, I wish we had more time, but we got to wrap it up. I'm going to get everyone back to the um, main room. But thank you guys so much for joining us. This has been super valuable. I know people got a lot out of this. So, yeah, thank you, Anthony. Thank you, Josh. Yeah, absolutely. It's been fun. Thanks for having me. All right. Thank you, everybody. Uh, go to carrot.com slash live. We'll see you in the uh, main room. Yeah, go to carrot.com slash live, and we'll see you back in the main stream. We have... Uh, we're going to do a, a data dive session with um, Trevor and a team member Cam on what we're seeing as the best lead sources, uh, where motivated seller leads are coming from. It's going to be super valuable. So make sure to show up for that. That's happening right now at carrot.com slash live. And then right after that, we have Tristan Amata from Labco Agents talking about leadership. It's going to be gold. So go to carrot.com slash live or click the link uh, on here to go back to the main room. And thanks for joining the session. We'll see you all later.